This morning, budget blowback. Republicans reacting to Governor Evers' two-year spending plan. The main sticking points they'll be fighting over. Plus, live drive coverage. We're watching the roads this morning for your morning commute. School closings coming in by the minute. We'll let you know how it's going to impact you. And we are dry for now, but some of the uh, snow will be moving on in. Therefore, we do have the alert day for that snow. All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to News 3 Now this morning. I'm Chris Stanford. And I'm Josh Ryder. We want to start right away with Kelly Slifka for that alert day forecast. Most of the metro area schools have already called the classes off. Yeah, we have 60 closings in the viewing area. A lot of them coming in within the last hour, uh, including what, Verona, Wana Keys, Sun Prairie, Oregon, Monona, uh, Monona Middleton Cross Plains. I believe. Madison has Madison not. has not. Uh, let me double check to see, but Middleton Cross Plains is closed today. Uh, McFarland as well. So you're seeing those metro schools call it first. Madison has not yet uh, put that in yet. Uh, if they do, we'll uh, be sure to let you know. This is uh, all for snow that has yet. We, we've see, we've seen this story before. <laughs> right. and the snow has yet to start falling. Well, so like last Thursday, it came down really heavy there for a while between about nine and eleven o'clock, and obviously that caused a lot of problems there for those couple of hours. I'm not expecting it to become that heavy. It's going to be lighter snow at least initially. It'll be fairly steady though throughout the morning into the afternoon hours, and a wide range of totals simply up to the north. There's going to be a sharp cutoff. Once you get north of the Dells, hardly anything, maybe an inch in the Dells area. Heaviest snow, though, falling to the east and south east of Madison, looking at uh, maybe upwards of seven inches, and this will be affecting areas southeast of the Dells. And right now, the snow is creeping into uh, parts of Green and Rock County. It is yet to move into Dane County, but you can see that swath off to our west. Probably within the next half hour or so, we'll see some of the lighter snow moving in. Once again, it's not going to be like last Thursday. It's not going to come down at uh, uh, reducing visibility is less than a half of a mile. But we do have that snow swath all the way down toward Des Moines and actually beyond that. And that's what's going to be moving on. Take a look at our future track that you can see the snow moving in during the rush hour. It'll be moving in from the south to north. Temperatures right now in the upper 20s. We do have the winter weather advisories officially in effect here in Madison. Winter storm warnings down in the south. So pretty steady snows into the afternoon hours before tapering off as you head home from work or school. So looking at temperatures in the 20s and that wind will be up there at uh, 15 to 25 coming out of the northeast. All right, Kelly Slifka, thanks a lot. Let's get to some breaking news this morning. Uh, Madison police could sure use some help. They are looking for the driver involved in a deadly hit and run. This happened just after 930 last night, 937 last night near Schrader Road and Struck Street here on the west side. Officers found the man and his dog dead when they got there. The vehicle that struck them took off, left the scene. They do not have a description of the vehicle or the suspect this morning, so they're asking anyone with information. Maybe you saw a car driving in that area yesterday evening, or maybe you have a house camera, a security camera, and you live in that area. Madison police would sure love to look at it. Give them a call. Now back to our live drive coverage for this alert day. We are on the Beltline at this hour. This is photojournalist Mark Schilling actually on Stoughton Road right now. You can see traffic moving along just fine. We have yet to see the snowflakes fly here in the Madison metro area, but most of the area schools, as we mentioned a little bit ago, have called classes for today with that snow moving in over the next hour or so. Again, as far as the Madison streets crews, they cannot plow unless they get at least three inches of snow. So they'll be monitoring that throughout the day. Again, our live drive coverage here will be monitoring for any updates throughout the morning show. Yeah, this morning it's expected to look a little bit different than it did last Thursday when we saw conditions like this. It was wet and heavy, not expected to be the case today. Uh, that's going to mean everything for plow crews, uh, and how they keep the roads clear for you. Because it's colder, than last week's snow, it shouldn't be quite as dense and mashed potato like in the snow consistency. So it might make things a little less sort of greasy and sloppy on the roads because we won't have that melting from underneath either. If today is your trash day, the city says they should still be able to get to it, but if it does snow heavy enough, they may have to delay it. Crews want to remind you to place your bins in your driveway and out of the way of the plows on the roads. Even though snow was on the way, ice conditions on our lakes have been quickly deteriorating. A Dane County Sheriff's Office spokesperson says deputies with the county's Marine and Trail Division have spotted ice shanties around the area tilting in and sitting in standing water, so it may be time to bring those back to shore. Just do it safely. I am Tony Evers, and I'm proud to deliver my third biennial budget message tonight 
as the 46th governor of the great state of Wisconsin. The debate over the state's budget begins now with the governor's budget address last night. The big question this morning, where will he find compromise with Republicans? He has his work cut out for him. Political reporter Will Keneally reports from the state capitol. As we begin the budget discussion, and I have no doubt the conversation will be lively tonight. Lively but contentious as the governor lays out his priorities for the next two-year budget. The state has a record-setting $7 billion budget surplus that both sides of the aisle are fighting over how to spend. Both want to consider tax cuts. I promised cutting taxes would be a part of our agenda to help working families afford rising costs, and it is. And I'm proposing we do it responsibly by targeting relief to working Wisconsinites who need help affording those rising costs. That would mean a 10% tax cut for those making less than $100,000 per year. But Republicans want to lower taxes across the board. Creating a flat tax that has the greatest benefit for Wisconsinites making more than $280,000. They also had a resounding message in response to the speech, too much spending. I felt like I was watching Oprah Winfrey. A billion for you, a billion for you, a billion for you. Assembly Speaker Robin Voss agrees with the governor on the problems that he saw, but... And at the end of the day, an unrealistic solution for what Wisconsin needs to solve its problems. We saw that again tonight. It was a budget that is absolutely devoid of reality. So the key will be what areas of the budget Evers can get Republicans to agree on. He pitched increasing school funding, especially for mental health, as he declared 2023 the year of mental health. He also laid out a plan for increasing funding to municipalities, what's called shared revenue. Evers would give those municipalities 20% of all sales tax revenue. Work at the local level over the last decade hasn't been helped by the fact that our local partners have been asked to do more with less. That was political reporter Will Keneally. The process of lining up the budget will run through the end of the fiscal year in June. All right, a lot of uh, new reaction to the governor's budget address last night, uh, both for and against it. Uh, Senator Balwig, she serves on the Joint Committee on Finance and says the budget is full of unsustainable spending. She says Evers has proven to be an urban governor. Wisconsin cannot leave its rural communities behind. Legislative Republicans will ensure all of Wisconsin is funded in this plan. Senate Majority Leader Devin, uh, Devin Lemahue, meantime, he is also slamming the governor's plan, saying that Republicans will have to build the budget now from the base up. The majority leader says when they're finished with it, you'll see a budget that provides real tax relief for all Wisconsin families, not the bait and switch the governor has introduced. This version of the budget will uh, appropriately invest in core services like education, health care, infrastructure, police, fire and EMS. 607 now, we are learning some new details in the investigation into alleged harassment within the Middleton High School football program. A 22-page report obtained by News 3 now details the allegations and the coaching staff's response. The investigation began on January 11th after the school's resource officer learned of a possible sexual assault in the men's locker room. The victim, who was on the football team, told the officer two other players approached him in the shower and began touching themselves inappropriately. Another student told investigators, uh, investigators Investigators. He'd witnessed multiple incidents of team members inappropriately touching and peeing on one another in the locker room. He also stated that team members would send inappropriate photos of one another in a team Snapchat. The victim said that he brought his concerns to head coach Jason Pertzborn, who told him that he'd talked to students involved and encouraged the player to stay on the team. Pertzborn then resigned his coaching position on January 27th citing personal reasons. As of this morning, no criminal charges have been filed, but the case was sent to the Dane County DA's office for review. The district says the investigation is still ongoing, but they'll have to identify and eradicate any unwelcome culture now that they find within the Middleton High School football program. Coming up, we know the, the dairy is the big cheese in Wisconsin, but do you ever think about the people who make it? We're taking you to a new local business celebrating all things dairy, bringing its history to present day. And as we go to break at 6.09 this morning, a live drive look at the roads as we're waiting that snow in the Madison area. School is closed across parts of the viewing area. Continuing coverage next. The price of gold is at a seven-year high. Get top cash on the spot for your gold at Diamond Select. Cash in today while the price of gold is high. Don't miss out. Get instant cash for your gold today at Diamond Select, downtown Stoughton. 
I'm voting for Judge Janet Protasiewicz for Supreme Court. She believes in our freedom to make our own decisions when it comes to abortion. Extremists want to ban abortion. Even in cases of rape and the health of the mother. Judge Janet Protasiewicz is the change Wisconsin needs. It's Auto Show. The deals start now and so should you. Get started on your next Ford SUV. Like Bronco, Explorer, or the new Escape. Get here to get a deal on the SUV's number one in brand loyalty. It's Auto Show. The deals start now, and so should you. During Auto Show, choose Flex Buy on Escape, Edge, or Explorer with 3.9% APR financing for 66 months plus 1,000 Auto Show cash. Hi, I'm Tim O'Brien, owner of The Healthy Place. I'm excited to tell you about our new Wild Theory CBD products that will get you high fives from everyone you know. Wild Theory's new groundbreaking formula has higher levels of the good stuff and it packs surprising results. Is it legal in Wisconsin? Of course! Is it potent? You bet. Will you love it? I'm sure of it. Stop by one of our Madison locations or visit findyourhealthyplace.com, type in high five and our website will hook you up. At Lawton Cates, your life counts is more than just a slogan. It's providing guidance after a serious accident. From the first phone call, we're by your side, helping with the important decisions. Not just for your medical care, but for your family's peace of mind. The Lawton Cates team combines experience and genuine compassion because we know how much is at stake. And we're dedicated to ensuring you can heal and move forward. At Lawton Cates, your life counts. Call today for a free consultation. Lake Ridge may be a new name, but it isn't a new bank. It's one built on over a century of community commitment. One equipped with all the knowledge and resources of 145 collective years of experience. Monona Bank and State Bank of Cross Plains are coming together as one. As Lake Ridge Bank, we're doing more together for you. A former prosecutor, now circuit court judge, Janet Protasiewicz. On the Supreme Court, she'll be a common sense judge. She believes in abortion rights, fairness for all, and protecting public safety. Janet Protasiewicz for Supreme Court. From a diamond engagement to a diamond anniversary and everything in between, we shop the diamond capitals of the world so you don't have to. At Diamond Select, we also fix, reset, and remake jewelry too. Diamond Select in downtown Stoughton. You're watching News 3 Now this morning. So even if you didn't grow up on a farm, your parents, grandparents, or great-grandparents probably worked the land or milked the cows. If you want to relive that connection, there is a place for you in Paoli. Brady Mallory takes us to Seven Acre Dairy Company, a hybrid business where highlighting the local history of its dairy is the bread and butter. In case you're utterly confused about where you're at. We've got a cow, which is obviously super symbolic of like who we are here. There are little reminders that this is a dairy destination. We're making our own ice cream, making our own butter. Here's a bird's eye view of Seven Acre Dairy, situated on the banks of the Sugar River in Paoli, Wisconsin. We wanted to have this bar be really fun and um, be eclectic. It sure is eclectic. Under one roof, there's a bar, Restaurant. We've tried different things. The biscuits are delicious, and of course, the butter. I did a grilled cheese. A cafe, micro dairy plant, of course, and. Our sweets are generally named after kind of cheesy things or naturey things. Um, and this was the old receiving area. A boutique hotel, in case guests want to branch out and stay a while in Paola. Seven Acre Dairy didn't just sprout up on this land overnight. In fact, it has deep roots planted firmly in the area's dairy history. This building was really a reflection of this golden age of Wisconsin dairy. Mink and his business partners restored this 135-year-old facility, which was an old cheese factory. From some of the walls to the floors, parts of the original building are still intact. We are standing, the original factory sat right there. You know, so right there, there were seven farmers who in 1888 formed a cooperative to be able to market their 
uh, pr produce and market their milk into cheese. Seven Acre sources its food and dairy from nearby farmers and wants to carry on the locally focused tradition that started generations ago. Hearing from the local farmers who delivered milk here, hearing from the old cheese makers, hearing from the old butter makers, and we thought that was really cool. And so for us, what we decided we wanted to do is kind of build a business around like all of those amazing stories we heard from people. It's just so pretty. I mean, they did a great job. They didn't change the feeling of the place. It's not that confusing. Mink says if you find a place with a long and rich history, you honor it, respect it, and you milk it for all it's worth. And that's how a bright future rises to the top. Give this building a new life, keep it dairy, and make sure that when we hand it off in like 2050 or 2060, like, that, you know, this building could be in dairy production for four centuries, right? Like, and make sure that we kind of put that on that trajectory. That was Brady Mallory reporting. Mink says he and his business partners also want to honor the history and beauty of the seven acres of land where the business sits. Quarter after six now, 68 school closings. Some of them coming in after 6 a.m. this morning. Kelly, Madison Public Schools, though, have not canceled. I don't know, two to four inches necessary? I don't know, we'll see. We do have an alert day because it will be impacting the roads this morning, especially areas south of Madison as you get down toward a Rock County, Greene County, Monroe, Janesville area. That's where you're going to see the six, seven inches of snow. Um, and it's going to be a steady snow. We're not expecting real heavy snow at any given point, but it's going to be pretty steady as we go into the morning hours into the afternoon. Right now it is uh, creeping into the southern Wisconsin right now, but it extends all the way down toward Omaha. So this will be moving on in. Right now it's just south of the border here of Dane County into Green and Rock counties. Maybe some moderate snow starting to move into the southern parts of Rock County toward Janesville. We've had some snow accumulation on the roads here in uh, southern parts of Rock County, but right now Janesville just on the edge of that. Now as we look at our Doppler track, you see that that snow fills on in steady, light to moderate throughout the morning hours into the afternoon. This will not be like what we had last Thursday when we had those two hours of two inches per hour. That's not going to be the case. This will be a lighter snow for us. They are seeing the visibility is reduced right now, but five miles is not too bad. So we're not seeing the real heavy snow falling there in Janesville. Winter weather advisories in effect uh, for Madison over toward Lone Rock Mineral Point up toward Juneau. Winter storm warnings down the south. That's where the heaviest snow is expected to fall. Here's a storm system with that snow all the way over toward Nebraska. That's going to be beelining right into southern Wisconsin. So we are looking at the snow pretty steady throughout the day. The heaviest snow in Green and Rock County into southern Jefferson County. This is going to be a drier snow. It's not going to be that heavy wet snow like we saw last Thursday. And then we're going to be melting this snow as we warm into the 40s, it looks like, this weekend. Right now, 28 in Madison, 29 in Moreau, Janesville with the snow, 30 degrees. Right now across Dane County, 27 in Verona, 29 currently in Stoughton. We do have that wind out of the northeast at 15. It'll be up there 15 to 25 miles per hour throughout the day. So pretty steady, light to moderate snow throughout the afternoon hours tapering off as you're headed home from work or school. And that snow is going to stick around, it looks like, with two to four inches in the Madison area as you get toward the Dells. Lesser amounts, four to seven toward Janesville. And you can see that swath mainly affecting extreme southern Wisconsin going into this evening. The alert day, your first warm forecast, cold for the next couple of days, but warming up this weekend. Uh, one of our loyal viewers on uh, Twitter, Miss Java1972, <laughs> uh, says that the snow just started in Janesville uh, a few minutes ago. So there you go. Here it comes. Here's sports director Zach Handley now with your morning sports. You know the saying, a win's a win? Well, you couldn't find a better example of that than Wisconsin's win over Michigan. The Badgers didn't make a field goal in the final 10 minutes of the game and missed their last 15 shots. Despite that, they won and now sit on the last four in line in the latest ESPN Bracketology. Now, in order to stay there, they have to keep winning, but Greg Gard doesn't plan on looking into the future with this group. Don't get caught up into what's down the road. Uh, I'm more concerned about playing good basketball right now because if you don't play good basketball right now, down the road ain't gonna happen. And I don't care if it's November, December, January, February. You know, we just got to keep finding ways to, you know, grind it out however we need to to, you know, get the win. Uh, and so tonight showed even when, you know, shots aren't falling, you know, we can find a way to get it done. So we just got to continue to do that. 
The Wisconsin women with the tall task of slowing down McKenna Warnock and seventh-ranked Iowa. We'll get to the former Monona Grove star in a bit, but first, Caitlin Clark. She pulls up from the logo for three of her 24 points. Then later, it's Clark to Warnock for two more. McKenna finished with 12 points and four assists. Badgers lose 91 to 61. After a successful weekend in Minnesota, the Wisconsin women's hockey team now turns their sights on the number one team in the country and the defending national champs, Ohio State. And the Buckeyes are coming to Le Bon on a mission to win the WCHA regular season title. And that's more than enough motivation for the Badgers to play spoiler. They're going to be coming in here trying to, you know, win our league championship, and that's one of the trof toughest trophies to win around women's college hockey. And so they have a chance to do that, and, you know, we stand in the way. Just ending it on a super high note, um, you know, possibly knocking them from a, a title from their uh, number one in the country ranking. So I think it's huge for us. Uh, we're definitely uh, going to put the pressure on them and, and try to get two wins. What a past couple of days it's been for Joe Thomas. On Thursday, the former Badger found out he'll be inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So, of course, he's been celebrating that accomplishment, but he's also been getting his face fitted with the Hall of Fame's sculptor. The bust measurements was probably the moment of the measurement, uh, what do they call it, Sizing Saturday. That made it the most real um, because you sit with the sculptor and he's measuring like, you know, every little nose hair that you got and the giant ears I got. Back to you. 620 right now. Coming up, see just how much Americans like the Midwestern accent. And let's check in with the live drive again. Uh, we got a lot of school closings. Madison has yet to close though, uh, but pretty much everybody else is as we wait for the snow to start falling here in the Metro. We're back right after this. Meet the candidates for state Supreme Court tonight at 6.30. Cobus and Buses, now hiring. My name's Mike Williams. I've been driving school bus off and on for 21 years. Here at our terminal, we're kind of like a family too. Somebody has an issue with a bus, other people kick in and help and get the job done. The Build, Remodel, and Landscape Show is coming and admission is free. Shop, compare, and save big. This Friday, Saturday, and Sunday only at the Monona Terrace Convention Center. Back by popular demand, Black Violin returns to Overture Center for one night only. Be prepared. This isn't your typical classical violin concert. Black Violin, Thursday, March 2nd at Overture. Get your tickets today at Overture.org. This ring is a commitment. After we got married, I got very sick. He will come every day to help me walk again. And now I'm back. This is a reminder that love endures all. Express your extraordinary love. Jared, love brilliantly. This President's Day, we're throwing a five-star celebration at Bob's Discount Furniture, making it super easy to shop my top-rated products. I've got on-trend styles. Ooh. Unbeatable prices. Ah. Thousands of highly rated and reviewed pieces ready to ship now. So this President's Day, ditch the gimmicks and phony sales because the stars have aligned at Bob's. The reviews are in. Shop Bob's for style, value, and quality. Whoa, that's a great deal. A great deal isn't a great deal if almost no one can get it. Seven feet tall. It's a fun ride. But lonesome. See ya. At U.S. Cellular, there are no surprises about who's eligible for our best deals because we don't believe in hidden requirements. That's why right now you can choose from any unlimited evolved plan and get $830 off any phone with no trade-in needed. Exclusively at U.S. Cellular. We depend on judges to keep our families safe. But Jennifer Doro has a long history of keeping criminals, even sexual predators, out of prison. As a judge, Doro lets criminals off easy so often a fellow judge questioned her soft treatment of convicted criminals. She even gave a convicted domestic abuser two days to report to prison, time he used to violently assault his own family members. Jennifer Duro lets criminals off the hook, and that has no place on our Supreme Court. Don't delay, the Brothers Main President's Day sale is happening now. Shop local and save with tremendous deals on Whirlpool, KitchenAid, Maytag, and Amana appliances. We have the area's largest selection and the lowest prices guaranteed. Feel like family. Brothers Main. Watch News 3 Now at 5 with Eric, Susan, and Gary. Weeknights. 
Cobus and Buses, now hiring. Working with Cobuson, it's definitely been great because of the flexibility. If you do need time off, they work around you. They, they definitely try to make it a company that's based for you. Visit Cobuson.com to apply. 624, a new study shows which accents Americans like the most. The Midwestern accent ranked number three overall, with 24% of Americans voting in favor for us. But we came in at number one for most trustworthy accent. I feel like, like that's that. an important one. Yeah. Number three for smartest sounding and again number three for the accent Americans like the most. Number four for sexiest American accent. So who beat us? The southern accent came in at number one overall followed by New York. Yeah. <laughs> the Boston. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. There are so many different types of Midwestern accents. Like what are we talking? Like a, like a Minnesota Midwestern accent? I want to say Northern. Northern. Like when I think, but I'm also biased because I am from Minnesota. Yeah. Sure It's are. so different from Chicago though, so. Uh-huh, which is, you know, different from many parts of Illinois. That's true. It's maybe Southern just the Indiana bigger city and, thing, so. Oh yeah, like it's, it's the, it's the non-accent accent. <laughs> The, the accent. Who determines like that? I don't know. <laughs> I like the trustworthiness, though. Yeah, it's a Midwest nice, you know, yes, you figure yeah. it out. Yeah. Like I don't you, know. About, I'm not a big Southern fan, I guess, of the. It can be endearing. But yeah. I don't know. It depends. So the British accents just immediately make you sound smart. <laughs> That's true. It makes you sound smart. And, and then if you have glasses, even smarter. So. There you go. There Is you that go, why Chris. you wear glasses? Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, go, go on to the big story of the day here. Kelly Slifka, we're waiting on that snow to start falling. I need to get Madison some glasses again. here. <laughs> uh, we do have winter storm warnings already in effect areas to the uh, south. Uh, that goes into effect until 9 o'clock. Winter weather advisory is officially in effect into Madison. So uh, the snow is still not quite in Madison yet, but it's close, knocking on our door. But some moderate snow there in Green and Rock County down on the south. That'll be spreading on into the north fairly shortly this morning. Okay, we'll keep tracking it after this. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. What you see is important. That makes quality eye care important too. Get personalized care from experienced optometrists at Shopco Optical. Better eye care. You'll see. Don't need glasses. See us for your contacts and save on your annual supply. Garage doors do not like the cold weather at all. As soon as it gets cold springs, parts will burn. At Precision, we always come fully stocked. We're able to typically solve most garage door problems within a couple hours. Precision Door Service, a name you can trust. Are you a T-Mobile customer in Wisconsin? Recently, T-Mobile disclosed that 37 million customer accounts were hacked, putting your personal information at risk. Don't let identity theft ruin your credit score and cost you thousands of dollars. Call Lawton and Gates for a free consultation and learn your rights. Madison liberals are trying to take over the Wisconsin Supreme Court. That's why we need to elect conservative justice Dan Kelly. Dan Kelly has a proven record of protecting our freedoms and cast the deciding vote to end the COVID lockdowns of our schools and businesses. Sheriffs across Wisconsin have endorsed Dan Kelly because he has a record of enforcing the law. On February 21st, vote conservative justice Dan Kelly for Wisconsin Supreme Court. Fair Courts America paid for and is responsible for the content of this advertising. To everyone who believes in tradition, come enjoy a few of ours from Wisconsin. People in Wisconsin love a good fish fry. Really love. And we love sharing it with guests everywhere. At Culver's, we still batter our North Atlantic cod by hand to order. And we cook it to a crispy, golden perfection just for you. For you. For you. So it's crispy outside, flaky inside. Let us take care of you. With some homegrown traditions we were raised on. From Wisconsin with love. Welcome to Delicious. All right, team. We got a big project coming up. And it all starts with ordering promotional products. I'm on it. Four Imprint makes it easy to get the logo products you're looking for. The latest in apparel, drinkware, bags, high-tech items, and more. You can be certain of getting it right at fourimprint.com. Come on out. I'm on it. Four Imprint, for certain. Low E has hurt my ability to perform. He hasn't been able to make the bed in years. Now there's hope. 
Now through February 16th, join Planet Fitness for $1 down, $10 a month, cancel anytime, and turn your low energy into big fitness energy in 2023 in a clean and spacious, judgment-free zone with tons of equipment to get you energized. Low E, not for me. Simply join through the free PF app for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel anytime. Deal ends Thursday, February 16th. What you see is important. That makes quality eye care important too. Get personalized care from experienced optometrists at Shopgo Optical. Better eye care. You'll see. Shopgo Optical welcomes more insurance plans than ever. Call to book an exam and verify cover. This morning, budget blowback. Republicans react to Governor Evers' two-year spending plan. The main sticking points they'll be fighting over. Plus, live drive. We're watching the roads for your morning commute so you know exactly how the snow will impact you. And that snow is, uh, is gradually moving in. Therefore, the First Warren weather team has issued an alert day today. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to News 3 Now. This morning, I'm Chris Stanford. And I'm Josh Breider. Kelly Slifka here with us as well. Okay, so here's the question. Are schools getting too soft? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes and yes and yes. Okay, I mean, here we are. It's uh, 630 and we have 73 school closings. And you think our viewing area is going to see uh, about two to four inches. In Madison, I can see Janesville, Beloit area where they're talking about six, seven Yeah, inches. they're going to see a little heavier snow, so. yeah. Uh, that's, that's why they canceled yesterday, but making this decision late, it's impacting a lot of parents' days. A lot of working parents are going to have to stay home today to watch their little kids. Uh, a lot of folks are going to be scrambling this morning. Yeah, and you know, last week when we had that snow and it came down really heavily at not, between 9 and 11, reducing visibilities near half a mile to near zero, that is not going to be the case today. This is going to be a lighter, steadier, light to moderate snow. As you get down toward Janesville, though, that's where the snow will be a little bit heavier, so that will reduce visibilities. They may see six to seven inches here in the Madison area, as we just talked about. Two to four inches as you get north of Dane County, one to two inches toward the Dells, north of the Dells, hardly anything. Uh, still knocking on our door here, it just has not quite moved into Dane County yet. Monroe, Janesville area, seeing that snow continuing to fly. This is where the heaviest snow is going to continue to fly, but you can see it does extend all the way past Des Moines, so that snow is headed into southwestern Wisconsin. But once again, there's going to be a sharp cutoff. You get it north of the Dells, hardly anything, maybe a few flurries. But take a look at our future track. That snow should be spreading in during the rush hour here in Madison. Areas to the north, once again, Let's even into the Adels area, not seeing anything uh, past uh, 930. Right now, we're sitting at 28. We do have a stiff northeast wind. We have the winter weather advisories in Madison areas to the west and northeast. Winter storm warnings in effect until 9 o'clock for areas to the south. But pretty steady snow throughout the morning into the afternoon hours. Light to moderate should become flurries as we go into the evening hours. Some of the roads will become a little bit slick as that snow starts to move on in, especially areas to the south. But just expecting light snow and flurries for the evening commute. All right, Kelly, thank you. Remember, you can stay on top of the conditions right now down to your neighborhood by downloading the free First Warren weather app. Just search WIC weather in your app store. Back to our breaking news from overnight. Madison police still looking for the driver involved in a deadly hit and run. This happened just after 930 last night near Schrader Road and Struck Street. Officers found the man and his dog dead when they got there. The vehicle that struck them left the scene. They do not have a suspect description or a vehicle description right now. So anyone with information, maybe have a house camera in that area again near Schrader Road and uh, Struck Road, Struck Road uh, on the east uh, on the west on the west side here uh, south of the Beltline. Uh, Call police if you have any information that could help them track down that driver in the car. Now back to our live drive coverage this morning on this alert day. This is a look at the Beltline in Madison. No issues at this hour in Madison as Madison street crews have been busy pre-treating those roadways. Remember, we do have to get three inches of snow before they will have a citywide plow, but we do want to take a shot at Janesville right now where the snow is starting to fly. This is I-39 at uh, Highway 81 right now in Rock County. So you can see that that snow was moving in. This has actually changed quite a bit even here within the last few minutes. So we do know that snow is moving in. Yeah, and it's uh, eventually going to creep a little bit further north into the Madison area. And we'll let you know as soon as that starts happening. So last week's snow, we know it was heavy and wet, right? But this time around, it should be a lot lighter. Uh, local plow drivers say it makes all the difference on how they plan to keep the roads clear for you. Because it's colder it, than last week's snow, it shouldn't be quite as dense and mashed potato-like in the snow consistency. So it might make 
things a little less sort of greasy and sloppy on the roads because we won't have that melting from underneath either. If today is your trash day, the city says they should still be able to pick it up. But if it does snow heavy enough, they may have to delay it. Crews want to remind you to place your bins in your driveway and out of the way of the snow plows on the roads. I'm Tony Evers, and I'm proud to deliver my third biennial budget message tonight as the 46th governor of the great state of Wisconsin. The debate over the state's budget begins now with the governor's budget address last night. The big question this morning is where will he find compromise with Republicans? He certainly has his work cut out for him. Political reporter Will Keneally reports from the state capitol. As we begin the budget discussion, and I have no doubt the conversation will be lively tonight. Lively but contentious as the governor lays out his priorities for the next two-year budget. The state has a record-setting $7 billion budget surplus that both sides of the aisle are fighting over how to spend. Both want to consider tax cuts. I promised cutting taxes would be a part of our agenda to help working families afford rising costs, and it is. And I'm proposing we do it responsibly by targeting relief to working Wisconsinites who need help affording those rising costs. That would mean a 10% tax cut for those making less than $100,000 per year. But Republicans want to lower taxes across the board. Creating a flat tax that has the greatest benefit for Wisconsinites making more than $280,000. They also had a resounding message in response to the speech, too much spending. I felt like I was watching Oprah Winfrey. A billion for you, a billion for you, a billion for you. Assembly Speaker Robin Voss agrees with the governor on the problems that he saw, but... And at the end of the day, an unrealistic solution for what Wisconsin needs to solve its problems. We saw that again tonight. It was a budget that is absolutely devoid of reality. So the key will be what areas of the budget Evers can get Republicans to agree on. He pitched increasing school funding, especially for mental health, as he had declared 2023 the year of mental health. He also laid out a plan for increasing funding to municipalities, what's called shared revenue. Evers would give those municipalities 20% of all sales tax revenue. Work at the local level over the last decade hasn't been helped by the fact that our local partners have been asked to do more with less. That was political reporter Will Keneally. He said from what he heard from Republicans, they'll start from scratch, disregarding many of the proposals Governor Evers laid out. The process of lining up the budget will run through the end of the fiscal year in June. At least one environmental group is applauding the governor's plan. Clean Wisconsin supports the budget. It has been more than $100 million in it to help communities deal with PFAS con uh, pollution. Leaders say Wisconsin's drinking water challenges must be met with bold action. And with this budget proposal, Governor Evers continues to show leadership in addressing PFAS pollution. This is a crisis and we have to treat it like one. Looking ahead now, the Department of Transportation says construction will start soon on a stretch of Highway 12. Around the start of next month, crews will be rebuilding a four-mile stretch of the road between County M and the Whitewater Bypass between Fort Atkinson and Whitewater. The highway will be closing during construction with traffic being rerouted to State Highways 26 and 59. Happening now, even though snow is on the way, ice conditions on our lakes have been quickly deteriorating. A Dane County Sheriff spokesperson says deputies with the county's Marine and Trail Division have spotted ice shanties around the area tilting and sitting in standing water. Officials say it is time to bring those back to shore safely. In less than a week, voters will head to the polls in the Supreme Court primary. Tonight, here on News 3 Now, you can hear from the candidates in a special report detailing the race. It will determine issues like abortion and legislative redistricting in our state. You can watch that full special report tonight at 6.30 right here on News 3 Now. Continuing coverage on egg inflation this morning, Vital Farms is offering a lifetime supply of eggs. All you have to do is post a photo of Vital Farms' website showing a creative egg-themed proposal. This is part of their latest campaign, Put an Egg on It. <laughs> clever naming. Very clever. 638 right now. Let's take a live look outside on this alert day. Right now, this is a look at the Beltline. No snow so far in Madison, but we're tracking how it could impact your Thursday. And as we uh, go to break, here is the difference that, you know, about 40 minutes makes. You know, on Janesville, we're starting to see the snow starting to fly. And eventually it will make its way north to Madison. 
We'll track it for you right here on News 3 Now this morning when we come back. Ashley Home Store's President's Day Weekend Mattress Blowout event is here. Save up to 75% on mattress door busters from the top brands while they last. Or save big on Tempur-Pedic and Purple adjustable mattress sets. Only at Wisconsin's number one mattress retailer, Ashley Home Store. It would appear that the butler did it. But this isn't a whodunit film. It's a Nissan sales event. Get a low 359 per month lease on the 2023 Nissan Rogue. Catch these offers while you can. Race to savings on Patriot Lighting at Menards. Choose from our huge selection of ceiling fans. Our ceiling fans add elegance to any room and reduce energy costs all year round. We carry a great selection of styles and finishes, so you're sure to find the look that's right for you. Right now, get a $10 rebate on all stock Patriot Lighting ceiling fans over $50. See all of our lighting options on Menards.com. Save big money at Menards. Superior, Wisconsin. It's a must stop for people who enjoy the sweeter side of life. Right now with Papa Murphy's, we've got a great deal. Which means I make more great pizza. Like our 9.99 XLNY pizza. It's everything you'd expect from a classic New York style pizza, hot and fresh out of your oven. Order now at papamurphys.com. Every single moment takes your breath away. Every powerful emotion makes your spirit soar. Everyone who sees it remembers it forever. Join the circle of life at The Lion King. Coming to Overture Center May 11th through 28th. Tickets on sale now at overture.org. It would appear that the butler did it. But this isn't a whodunit film. It's a Nissan sales event. Get 0% financing for 36 months on select models. Catch these offers while you can. Ashley Home Store's President's Day Weekend Blowout is here. This Saturday through Monday, get the very best deals of the season on our furniture door busters for your living room, dining room, and bedroom, now up to 60% off. This weekend only at Ashley Home Store. IRS agent is waiting for your call back. When you've been scammed, when a business won't listen, when you get obstacles instead of solutions, don't give up. Call for action. Tonight at 10, scams are everywhere, but our Call for Action team is here to help. We'll show you how Wisconsin experts say you can protect yourself from some of the most common scams. Don't miss this Call for Action report. Tonight at 10, only on News 3 Now. You're watching News 3 Now This Morning. Welcome back, 642 on your Thursday morning. Back on the live drive, photojournalist Mark Schilling on the Beltline at this hour. And yeah, it looks like just any other day here. No snow flying quite yet, but we do have that alert day in the forecast as the snow begins to move in. We do know it's already snowing in green and rock counties where mm -hmm. many schools are closed. Yeah, take a look at this. Here's a picture here. This is uh, I-39 uh, south of Woodman Road in Janesville. You can see the snow was already flying down there, and we do expect that uh, to be changing and coming our direction within the uh, next hour or so. It's not going to be coming down as heavy and as wet as as it was last Thursday uh, and that was the big problem last Thursday is that it just came down so quickly and there was so much moisture in it that it caused so many problems. Uh, this is going to be different. A slower snow, a steadier snow uh, that's supposed to be lasting most of the day. Uh, just about every school in the viewing area is closed with the exception of Madison. Madison, Madison Metropolitan School District still uh, open. Staying open this morning. All right, we'll keep you posted right here on the program. Watching nature documentaries can motivate people to help the environment. A new study in Annals of Botany found that after watching the BBC documentary Green Planet, Google searches for the plants featured in the show dramatically increased. That increased awareness can lead to more participation in conservation efforts. 643, let's get to Kelly Slifka with the latest on that alert day and the storm track. Kelly, what are we seeing? Well, right now we're still waiting for that snow to, it's been knocking on the uh, county border here just to the south of Madison, but we do have the alert day that goes into effect through early evening. 
As mentioned, it's going to be a steady light to moderate snow here in the Madison area, a little bit heavier down to the south in Green and Rock County. Wide range of snowfall totals, an inch or less near the Dells, two to four inches in Madison as you get toward Rock and Green County, maybe even to southern Jefferson County. Could be talking about six to seven inches of snow. So this will be a steadier snow that'll go throughout the morning into the afternoon because it extends all the way back to Omaha, Nebraska, and it's uh, headed right into a southern Wisconsin. Right now it's just to the uh, south of Dane County. Well, it looks like it's now just starting to move into uh, southern parts of Dane County, and then it'll quickly move on in here as we go over the next uh, 15 minutes or so. But moderate snow in Monroe and Janesville right now, and that is accumulating on some of the roads. So you can see that's lifting to the north right now in uh, Belleville, seeing some of that snow as well, headed toward Edgerton, looking at that snow to be moving in fairly quickly. Now, as we take a look at our Doppler track, as you see the edge just slowly inching northward, and once it gets toward the Dells, it kind of just stops. So it's going to be mainly that area to the south of the Dells that will see the main impacts of that. Right now, visibility is not too bad, even with that snow falling in Janesville. So it's not as heavy as what we saw last Thursday when we had visibilities zero to about a half of a mile. Winter storm warnings down to the south because the snow will be heavier. In the Madison area, we have winter weather advisors. Then you go north of there. Uh, maybe an inch at best uh, up toward the Adele. So watching that storm system down to our south and that swath of snow all the way back toward Nebraska. So we've got the uh, snow up to seven inches in green in Rock County and maybe southern Jefferson County. This will be a drier snow because the temperatures are uh, well below freezing, but that may also cause a little bit of blowing snow because that wind will be up up there at 25 miles per hour at times. The weekend though, we're going to be melting the snow. Once again, we're not hanging out in the snow real long as temperatures will warm into the 40s. Right now we're in the upper 20s. 30 in Janesville with the moderate snow falling in the Janesville area across Dane County, 28 in Cottage Grove, 27 in Sun Prairie, Verona, 27 as well. So we'll pretty much hold steady with this northeast wind bringing in some of that cooler air today. Temperatures in the upper 20s to around 30. Pretty moderate snow or steady snow, light to moderate snow into the afternoon hours before tapering off this evening. Uh, looking at about one to two inches south of the Dells as you head into northern Dane County, two to four inches in the Madison area, slipping south of the Dane County line, looking at four to seven inches for Green and also Rock County. You can see that swath extends a narrow band from Iowa into southern Wisconsin. So the alert day, our first warm forecast for the next couple of days looks cold. Hang on the snow if you want to enjoy it. Maybe this will be the last one of the season. We'll see upper 20s tomorrow, but it'll become a little bit sloppy this weekend as we warm back into the 40s. Pretty unsettled, it looks like, next week as well. Kelly, thank you. In his budget, Governor Evers is proposing providing more than $300 million in state funds to bolster the state's child care program. That news comes as more daycare centers are shutting their doors because the kids are way outnumbering the staff. Armand Rahman has the story of one daycare center. The last thing that Playhaven wanted to do was close. But that was the choice the staff at the East Side Child Care Center had to make when a teacher didn't show up Monday. The owner was like, we just, this isn't the product that we want. We want high quality care for these for these kids and for these families. And we are no longer able to produce that. The owner is Callie Prang's mother, who opened this location in 1991 when Callie was just a baby. It's been a part of our family for a long time. But she says in the three years she's worked there, their shrinking staff has been overwhelmed. We have most of them working, you know, split shifts. Taking care of children as young as six weeks and as old as kindergarten. The care has declined tremendously because the amount of time that we're able to give the teachers to plan and make these uh, projects and activities and things is slim to none. Prang says the few applicants that do interview rarely stay longer than a month. Most of them just disappear and we never see them again. While the news was sad for providers to give for parents. It was complete shock. One mother wished to remain anonymous while her five-year-old attended their last week at Playhaven. I was just hurt, hurt for my child who was loved being there and then of course just kind of panicked. What what are we going to do? She says the roughly 20 families from Playhaven are now scrambling to find care for their kids after next Friday. And now we're all kind of fighting for similar spots. And losing the fight to keep the kids is what's hardest for Playhaven staff. To have to like reach a point where we can't be with them anymore. It's really devastating for all of us. That was Armand Rahman reporting. Staff at Playhaven say they will take as many kids as they can to their Sun Prairie location after they close next Friday. Community Coordinated Child Care Inc. or 4C says parents can reach out to them for a referral search to find what's available in their area. 
Coming up in the morning sprint, continuing coverage of the investigation at a Middleton High School football. And live drive continues as we're watching the roads with the incoming snow on this alert day. But first, if you have a little kid turning three soon, please let us know so we can show their picture on TV. We'll be right back. Sponsored by Three Bears Resort, Indoor Water Park and Conference Center in Warrens, Wisconsin. Right now is absolutely the best time of year to buy furniture, and Slumberland Furniture is the best place during our huge President's Sale. Check out this gorgeous sectional, and it comes with a free ottoman, plus so much more during our huge President's Sale at Slumberland Furniture. I'm voting for Judge Janet Protasiewicz for Supreme Court. She believes in our freedom to make our own decisions when it comes to abortion. Extremists want to ban abortion. Even in cases of rape and the health of the mother. Judge Janet Protasiewicz is the change Wisconsin needs. Hi, I'm Jonathan Greenhut, the CEO of Plexiderm. And if you haven't tried Plexiderm, we've created the best offer yet with our Valentine's Day Plexiderm 10-Minute Challenge. All it takes is 10 minutes to reduce the appearance of under-eye bags, wrinkles, and crow's feet. Even the 11 lines between your eyes are visibly gone in minutes. Plexiderm works so well that celebrities in Hollywood and people just like you feel years younger in minutes. This is why I'm letting people try it for only $14.95 this Valentine's Day at PlexidermTrial.com. So I've had under eye bags for a very long time and it sucks. I have spent so much money on tons of eye creams, eye gels. Finally, I tried something called Plexiderm and I'm not joking, it works. When I do a collage, and everything is done, it looks amazing. That is exactly how Plexiderm makes me feel. I put it on my face and somehow, some way, I look together, which is amazing. I'm Jackie and I took the Plexiderm 10 minute challenge and so should you. I'm Neela, I'm 61 years old. I'm a professional personal trainer. It's so important to be in good health and to be fit and take care of yourself. How it makes you feel inside is amazing. And yet, when you look in the mirror, what you see necessarily isn't what you feel inside. Plexiderm, seriously, honest to God, it's amazing. There's nothing there, like the bags are gone. The instant results are from naturally based silicates found in shell rock. Once applied, your skin tightens and firms, rapidly reducing the appearance of under eye bags and wrinkles in minutes. This Valentine's Day is the best time to try Plexiderm at our startup price of only $14.95. So if under eye bags make you look tired or feel older, take action this Valentine's Day and see that younger looking you. Your solution is at PlexidermTrial.com or call the number on your screen. A former prosecutor, now circuit court judge, Janet Protasiewicz. On the Supreme Court, she'll be a common sense judge. She believes in abortion rights, fairness for all, and protecting public safety. Janet Protasiewicz for Supreme Court. Look at her mattresses. <laughs> Buying a mattress can be uncomfortable. That's why Slumberland has modernized the process. Right now at our huge president sale, get this Sealy Posturepedic mattress for $5.99. Slumberland, mattress shopping reinvented. News 3 Now's first worn weather team, keeping you ahead of the storm. 6.52, time for the morning sprint. We start with some breaking news on Madison's west side. Madison police are looking for a driver involved in a deadly hit and run. It happened just after 9.30 last night near Schrader Road and Struck Street. Officers found the man and his dog dead when they got there. The vehicle then left the scene and they do not have a description of that vehicle or a suspect. So anyone with information that could help officers, maybe you have a security camera attached to your home uh, that may have picked something up, contact Madison Police. Let's get back to our alert day coverage now. We are on the live drive at this hour showing you the impact of this alert day. We're watching for snow moving into Madison and Dane County here within the next hour or so. Right now, smooth sailing here in Dane County, but Rock County is a whole different story. They're already dealing with snow at this hour. Dozens of school closings already posted. You can find that on channel3000.com. Governor Evers laid out his budget for the next two years last night. He said he'd dole out spending for renter protection, automatic voter registration, and provide a tax cut for the middle class. Republicans say the proposal just spends too much. The debate continues until the end of the fiscal year in June. Continuing coverage in the investigation of Middleton High School football. A player claims his teammates approached him and touched themselves inappropriately while he was in the shower. He also says he witnessed players touching and peeing on each other in the locker room. 
The head coach has since resigned. The case is now in the hands of the Dane County District Attorney's Office to consider criminal charges. A grand jury indicted the father of the man charged with opening fire during the 4th of July parade last year in Highland Park, Illinois. Robert Crimo Jr. now facing seven counts of reckless conduct. Prosecutors have said that he helped his son, Robert Crimo III, obtain a gun license years before the shooting even though he threatened violence. Lawmakers on Capitol Hill were briefed for the second time this week about objects the U.S. military has been shooting down. U.S. intelligence tracked the Chinese balloon from the south coast of China last month, then to Guam, Hawaii, Alaska, Alaska and eventually the lower 48. The strongest theory is that the three balloons shot down over the weekend were likely for research and harmless. One person dead, three others injured after gunshots rang out at a food court in a mall in El Paso, Texas. You can see here some footage posted on social media of the scene. One person is in custody. Police believe a second suspect could still be at large. The conditions of the three victims who were hospitalized has not been made public. The New York man who killed 10 people at a Buffalo supermarket shooting last year in a racist attack will spend the rest of his life in prison without parole. The 19-year-old learned his fate during a hearing that was disrupted when someone in the courtroom lunged at him. He faces separate federal charges that could carry the death penalty. Well, good morning. I'm First Warren Meteorologist Kelly Slifka on this alert day as the snow is starting to move into southern parts of Dane County. This goes in effect through the evening hours. Wide range of snow cut off up to the north. Heaviest snow toward the Illinois border where maybe upwards of seven inches. That's why they have the winter storm warnings down the south. Madison area about two to four inches as we'll see the snow spread on in. We are starting to see that moving to southern Dane County uh, near New Glarus, Blanchard, seeing some of that snow. So here shortly, Mount Horb up toward Madison, Verona area, seeing that snow moving in. You can see it'll be pretty steady through the morning hours in the afternoon. Light to moderate snow, but it's going to be fairly so steady as we go through the afternoon. It will be windy as well with those winds up there out of the north at 15 to 25. Looking at the uh, seven day forecast uh, temperatures in the 20s the next couple of days, but we'll be melting the snow as we warm in the 40s and looks pretty unsettled next week. Chance of some rain or snow. It looks like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Another snow uh, maker. It looks like by Thursday of next week. Some for some reason it has its target on its back with temperatures in the 30s. It's like Groundhog's Day I Thursday know. over and over. Deja vu. <laughs> is it about again. Thursdays? I don't know. I don't know. Something about Thursdays. All right, time right now, 6.56. We want to take a live look in two different locations right now. Here's the difference. Madison on the left, Janesville on the right. Snow is moving into Wisconsin. We'll be tracking it live throughout CBS Mornings. Our next cut in, 7.26.